Hello, a very good evening to you. We're in just uh, under 20 minutes from now. We'll be bringing you the whole of the Skull Cup semi-final from Hamden, Rangers against Hearts. Those same two clubs who met just four days ago at Tynecastle in the Premier Division tonight. They meet for a place in the final of the Skull Cup. The trophy is what it's all about. It's been won, in fact, in each of the last two seasons by Rangers. So clearly they tonight are going for a chance of the hat-trick. They will meet uh, Aberdeen in that final if they can get the better of Hearts tonight. And that, of course, is very much in the balance because I don't think that anyone outside of Ibrox would uh, really object if Hearts were to finally go through and take the major trophy they've been threatening to win over the last couple of seasons. Well, we'll have that entire match for you uh, beginning at 7.30, but uh, I'm delighted to say that we'll have two guests, one of whom is somewhere between Glasgow Airport and our studios here in the west end of Glasgow. That's the Aberdeen captain, Willie Miller, but we do have Ali McLeod, the former Aberdeen manager, now managing air, and in fact, Ali, you're the man who made Willie captain of Aberdeen all those years ago, aren't you? Yes, I was delighted to see Willie do so well. Mm. Maybe not have a nice word for me, but he was a great <laughs> captain and still is. Right. What about this game tonight, Ali? How significant is it that, that Rangers got the win at Tynecastle on Saturday? Well, I, I think they're two different games completely, but I think that Hearts have got to solve how to get by the Rangers' central defence, and I think if Foster uses his speed, he could cause a lot of problems. But at the end of the day, I, I think Rangers will be strong enough to win. Mm. Do you think that the fact that the match is at Hamden is significant? Because Rangers, it's almost their second home, of course. Isn't well, it? I was disappointed in Saturday's game watching what I saw of the game. I, I don't think they played the normal Rangers way. They played an awful lot of long balls. I think the important and the key man to the whole match is Wilkins. If Ray plays the way he can and the way I think Rangers will want him to play, I think Rangers will stroll it. And I think it's up to Hearts to make sure that Wilkins doesn't play. You know, it's up to their manager. And I think he's the key man mm. because he's the one who makes them tick. He made England tick for many years, and he's the one that makes Rangers tick. Mm. What about Hearts? Because in a way they've been disappointing this season, haven't they? I mean, I've only seen them once myself, I've got to say, in the opening match against Celtic, but they're obviously not yet firing on all cylinders. No, I think they missed Robertson when they transferred him to Newcastle, and the two players that they've signed, they're hopeful that they both do well. They're both good players, but Eamon, as you know, he can either be brilliant or he can be absolutely terrible. And a lot depends tonight on how he handles his Stevens. He's got to stop Stevens coming forward, and at the same same time he's very good at going inside players and Stevens is not the best player if you go inside him and I think that's a lot what the problem that Hearts has had they've brought two new players and they've taken a little time to settle but I'm knowing Sandy and Alec I think that as the season goes on I think Hearts will become stronger and stronger and you know they haven't had a bad start to the season they just haven't fired in all cylinders and if they fired in all the cylinders tonight we're in for a great game. Mm. We haven't got the team lines yet, Ali. Uh, there's a lot of discussion about what Rangers are going to do about strikers with both McCoyst and, and Drinkle injured, both with similar injuries, in fact. Do you think Andy Gray will come on from the start? Absolute certainty. I mean, I think that Cooper, who's been playing there, is a great player, but he's not a striker. Mm. And I think that, particularly against Hearts, who have a big defence, I think Andy's the biggest certainty. If I, do, if I was a gambler, I'd put my money on Andy, and it's very nice to see him back in Scottish football. Yes, and realising an ambition as well, because he's always been a, a Rangers supporter, so it must be a dream for him at the age of, what, 32, to finally oh. get a chance to, to play for his favourite team. Yeah. Mm. And it'd be quite good, because I get criticised for leaving him out, taking him to Argentina. Of course. Although, right. we've been great friends, even allowing for that. Mm. He's had a terrible year, season over the last few years, anyway, with injury. He's, but he's wholehearted, a real workhorse, and mm. I think in the present Rangers side, he'll do reasonably well. Great. OK, well, let's look back to last night's game then, because uh, last night the first of the semi-finals was played, that was at Dens Park, and that, of course, was between Aberdeen and Dundee United, those two old rivals. Here's how it went. Alec McLeish, one of the Scotland heroes in Norway last week, with provided by McKimmy. Charlie Nicholas and Nicholas with a shot piece of Charlie Nicholas magic in the first minute of the game he did it all on his own here took a deflection and an awkward save to make for Billy Thompson first corner of the game Willie Miller's up and the header by Hewitt Every man, Willie Miller getting up, and there's John Hewitt, looping header, but it counts. Aberdeen are in the lead. 
Hewitt. Went down as if he'd been upended by Alec Cleland. But play goes on. And here's Kevin Gallagher. McAnally making a run. Padalainen's wedding in the middle. Gallagher! Well, that wasn't far away. Kevin Gallagher going it alone here. Willie Miller up against Gallagher on the right foot shot, sizzling over the top. Jim Betts swiveling for room. Betts with a shot. Jim Betts shooting on sight. And it nearly paid off for Aberdeen. Receiving the ball from Robert Connor. Left foot shot. Billy Thompson making a great save. The kick taken by Billy McKinley. There's Padalainen. And Gallagher. Picked in casually by Billy McKinley. Padalainen did well to get up to get his head to the ball. And Gallagher thwarted by Schnelders. Hegarty. Intended receiver, Padalainen. Still the chance on. Raphael Mead. Trying to get it through the forest of legs. But the Aberdeen defence getting the ball away. Yet here's another chance. Mead. Cross not accurate enough. Kevin Gallagher tried to hook it in himself. Missed by Padalainen. And the important block made by Willie Miller. Here come United again, Gallagher! <laughs> Kevin Gallagher testing out Theo Schnelders. But the Aberdeen goalkeeper coping well. Dundee United defence hesitating once again. And the chance is on for Charlie Nicholas. John Hewitt out to his left. Davy Dodds waiting in the middle, so is Nicholas. And now Jim Betts. Aberdeen players moving forward in numbers and with great style and precision. Jim Bed eventually getting in the shot after this run by John Hewitt. Had Dodds and Nicholas crying for the ball, but Bed shot over the top. Loaded in by McKinley and Padalainen! But at one count, Mixer Padalainen rising up after it was floated in by Billy McKinley. Jim Bett will take the free kick for Aberdeen. McLeish coming in from the back. And Brian Grant. A lot of space here. The header by Grant. That goal could decide the game. Brian Grant with a lot of room in which to work here. The cross perfect for Davy Dodds against his old team, and it's 2-0 to Aberdeen. Yes, that was the clincher which put Aberdeen through to the Skull Cup final for the second year in a row. Willie Miller, I'm delighted to say, has now joined us. Hot foot from the Aberdeen flight. Welcome, Willie. Uh, congratulations on that win last night. Obviously an important one for you, because I would imagine after losing in last year's final, you're very keen to get the chance to, to come back and do it again. Yeah, well, well it's always nice to beat Dundee United. Um, they've put one over on us uh, a few times at this stage of the competition, in various competitions. So it was nice to beat uh, Dundee United last night, but... Um, we're looking forward to to the final as well, and um, if it is Rangers, then maybe get one over in Rangers for, for them uh, beating us last season. Yeah, we'll get your thoughts on whether you think it will be Rangers in a minute, Willie, but let me ask you about that final last year. It was certainly, I think, the best game I saw last season, one of the best games we've all seen in a very long time. Was it any consolation at all in losing to know that you'd played in such a great match? Not really. I think <laughs> it was a, a consolation to, to the fans. Yeah, they went down and they thoroughly enjoyed the game, mm. and it was an entertaining game, but... Um, uh, as far as I'm concerned and the players concerned, it's not really a consolation. When you get to a final, you lose a final. It's, um, it's a bad feeling. Yeah, there's no consolation. Well, there was one controversial incident last night. Well, there were probably several, but the most controversial was that Pataline and header, which uh, even on the, the, the film we saw there, you were in no doubt yourself. And if we have a look at that again, I think we can see that the referee too had already blown before the ball was in the net, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, he did. Uh, he blew in early, so, so we did know that... Um, 
you know, it was in fact a, a foul. Here it is again. I see the cross coming over, and if we watch the referee very, very carefully, at this point, he indicates that there has been, I think, a foul uh, as Patalainen went up, Willie, wasn't it? Yeah, I, th I think something happened, and um, you can see David Dodge uh, going down on the ground there, and um, David uh, claims it was impeded by Patalina. Um And the referee saw it early, blew the whistle early, and we were in no doubt before he actually headed the ball that it was a foul. Mm. I was asking Ali earlier whether he thought the fact that Rangers had won at Tynecastle on Saturday was significant. What, what do you think? Do you think it's psychologically important to get one over a team you're going to meet in a semi-final just a few days later? It always helps, yeah. Um, whether it'll make any difference tonight, I'm not so sure. Um, semi-finals are uh, one-off games and it's played to the death tonight. And uh, I don't think it'll affect Hearts too much, uh, Hearts too much but um, it's always nice to get one over just uh, before you play somebody in a semi-final, yeah. Mm. What do you think yourself about tonight's match, Willie? I mean, is it going to be Aberdeen Rangers again, or can you see Hearts getting one over Rangers? Well, I think it's going to be a tight affair. Um, it's difficult to pick a winner. I think Rangers will start favourites. Um, but I'm sure Hearts will be determined uh, to, to get to the final. And they, they're desperate to win a trophy. They've came so close over the last uh, few years. Um, and just reading some of the articles in the paper from some of their players, they're desperate to win. So I think it'll be a cracker again. Yeah, we certainly all hope so, Willie. Well, let's uh, now hear from uh, one or two of the players, uh, some who are involved and uh, one who, sadly for the Rangers fans, isn't involved in tonight's match. Terry Butcher, uh, together with Ali McCoyst and Gary McKay, all had a word with Reval Alderson uh, just a few minutes ago. Uh, well, we had a good win Saturday, of course. Um, Saturday's not uh, forgotten as far as we're concerned. We had a good day away at Turnberry, uh, a chance to um, regroup and uh, chance to go over the battle plan, so to speak. So we're we're quite confident, but um, we know it's going to be a very very hard game. And if we can start off in the same positive attitude that we started off in both halves on Saturday, then we feel we've got a good chance. At Turnbury, how much relaxation and and how much thinking of the tactics? Uh, quite a bit of relaxation. I'm afraid Alan McCoy here didn't have too much because he's uh, still working to regain his full fitness, but. Um, it was a quite a bracing win today. We had a little walk on the on the golf course, saw a few shots played by some Americans. So it was quite relaxing, chance to get away and uh, chance to get things uh, thought over. Really, you beat the Hearts on Saturday. You say that's all forgotten, but presumably there must be a thought in in the backs of your minds that you've done it once, you can do it again. Well, not really, because you have to play each team four times in the Premier League anyway. So it doesn't matter within it um, as well as as in cup ties. It doesn't matter if it comes like three or four days after the after the previous encounter, so um, as far as we're concerned, it's all forgotten about. It'll be a totally different game here, we know that. It's a bit windy there. Um, we are expecting rain here, of course, uh, and it was, it was lovely and sunny on Saturday, so um, the conditions are different from a start, and uh, we know that both teams will be battling for a place. We know it's a knockout co uh, competition, so we're, we're going to go for the, for the win, hopefully, in 90 minutes. Good. Ali, you're not playing, of course, unfortunately. How do you feel about that? Obviously, I'm uh, very, very disappointed, <clears throat> although I'm down with the rest of the lads to Tunbury and he enjoyed a couple of days down there. Does it make it a bit different for you, difficult for you, even knowing that you're not going to play? Yeah, it's very, very difficult, especially when the rest of the lads are sort of relaxing, as Terry was saying, and I'm doing a bit of hard work in training my, myself back to full fitness. But uh, as long as the, the Rangers go through to the final tonight, it'll be all worthwhile. And how's the injury progressing? It's progressing pretty well. It's, uh, it's one of these things, obviously, you can't rush. It's got to, to take a little bit of time with it, but hopefully, I shouldn't be too far away from full fitness. So you're looking forward to a good game? Yeah, very much so, can't we? Gary, the first point, you were beaten by the Rangers on Saturday, yeah. so how do you pull back from that? Well, we just have to all pull together. Everybody has to work hard as a team, and hopefully we can get the right result tonight. Do you identify any failings from Saturday which are going to be put right tonight? Well, we realise that the team's not really playing that well as a whole, but we hope tonight that if we can get three or four more players on top of the players that played well on Saturday playing well, then we've got a right chance. Now, the chairman said today that if any team can uh, take on the Rangers on a night like this, it, it's the Hearts. Yes, well, I think he realises that we battle hard for each other, we've got a great team spirit, and he realises as well we've got a lot of skill that people have maybe missed out over the last three or four years. We all think it's about determination, but our skillful players like John Cahoon and Mike Gallagher, if they get their act together tonight, then we've got a right chance. Now, you've just been on the pitch, what are the conditions looking like? Conditions look great, ah, the park's very nice, uh, there is a wee bit of breeze, but I mean, you forget all about the wind and whatever, and you just go on with the game. Do you regard this as a, a stage to parade your talents on? I think everybody likes to play at hand and it's the National Stadium and it's a great park to play on, so we're all looking forward to it. Thanks very much. Thank indeed. you very much indeed.
right. That's good. Thanks, man. Give you some bits. And, you and you're joining us here at Hamden with the teams out on the pitch and the pipes and drums of the Glasgow Sky Association pipe band wheeling off the pitch as Rangers break to the traditional end to the left and Hearts to the east. Rangers, holders of the Skull Cup, 15 times winners, making their 30th semi-final appearance. There's the team. Sorry to disappoint Ali McLeod. There's uh, no starting place in the lineup for Andy Gray. He joins Graham Souness on the bench, and that means Scott Nisbet replaces the injured Kevin Drinkle. Hearts have appeared in five League Cup finals. They have had four wins, but that last win was 26 years ago. The Hearts team shows one change from Saturday. Wayne Foster at number nine, Eamon Bannon at 11. The substitutes, Ian Ferguson and Malcolm Murray. And there is Mark Walters, the man who tormented Hearts on Saturday and really set Rangers on the winning way. Line up, an interesting change there. They dropped Ian Ferguson onto the subs bench. Uh, Jim Craig, do you think that will make quite a difference? Well, I think it's a question tonight of a small hearts defence against a big range, a small hearts forward line against a big Rangers defence. And I think uh, and for Rangers, Mark Walters will be relishing the prospect of going up against Walter Kidd because Walter Kidd now must be regarded as a bit of a veteran. And uh, I'm sure the Rangers player is looking forward to playing against him. Well, Rangers have Walters on one wing and the capability of releasing Cooper on the other. Conditions at Hamden ideal, although a bit of rain has fallen just prior to the kickoff and uh, the fans packing into the terracings. Great atmosphere indeed for this little bit of television history, the first ever live coverage of a national semi final. I think the absence of Andy Gray from the starting lineup of Rangers is uh, significant there because um, he will certainly take time to find his feet in Scotland and possibly sitting out the first half of this will get him used to the sort of atmosphere to be expected in a semi-final occasion. And there's no doubt that bringing him on halfway through a second half would not only lift the Rangers because he's that sort of charismatic player but would have a great effect on getting the crowd behind Rangers. And there is the match official, Bob Valentine, 17 years a grade one official, and a very experienced man indeed. A shot from the Jockstein terracing at Hamden, showing how well filled the stadium is, and Hamden looking an absolute picture on this September evening as we await the second semi-final in the Skull Cup. Bob Valentine keeping the team's hearts will kick off Rangers against Hearts, the decision tonight. Who will meet Aberdeen in the final here at Hamden on 23rd of October? Foster and Cahoon waiting. And a crescendo of noise inside the stadium. Hearts get the game underway. Bannon doing well to nod that one inside. Galloway pushing forward, but it's picked up by John Brown. Quick delivery downfield, no one prepared to hold it. Nicely picked up by Dave McPherson. Foster, tricky little player. He was booked on Saturday at Town Castle for descent, and uh, that's a real get on with the game tonight and we have a real match for Terry Butcher as Hearts try and progress down the right. Kidd, that's an easy pick up for Chris Woods, the blonde English international. to the back four. Here's Black again, of course, a former Rangers player. Gary Stevens to Ian Ferguson. Running in 
to Berry, who's got his right thigh heavily strapped, as you can see. Crunching tackle by Goff. Hart's trainer waiting patiently, but uh, Paul Valentine not allowing him to go on. Yes, he will. Signals now. Coming off second best in that incident. Well, let's just have a look at the incident as Foster gets treatment. Good win of the ball there, Foster, and uh, golf pulling him down. Bit of a sore one there, but uh, Foster limping back into the fray. Under three minutes played, and the free kick two hearts. Bannon, who made a telling impact as a substitute at Town Castle on Saturday. Foot up there given against the hearts attacker, and the free kick two Rangers. Shielded that one through to Henry Smith. Bit of a breeze blowing into the face of the Hearts keeper. The midfield, a bit of a clutter. And safety first tactics at this stage. KG start as uh, both teams play it tight. And pushing Scott Nisbet, Dave McPherson has got four League Cup medals, goes all with Rangers. Wilkins and Cooper looking for Walters. Stand side linesman clearly indicating it's Rangers' way. Mr. McGuire. Welligan as Rangers now push forward. Ferguson has a quick shot, but it was swinging away from goal all the time. But uh, the snap effort from the number eight. A fairly typical semi final start to this game. Both teams a little bit apprehensive, making sure that the odd hard tackle is going in just to make sure your opponent knows that you mean business. And uh, it could be fairly vital for Hearts to get the first goal tonight. Um, that's a powerful shot there by Ian Ferguson from quite a distance, but uh, it's important to try tonight to each team to get the first goal, but more important probably for Hearts to do it. So Hearts have won the free kick. And there's a good support through from the capital city. Interesting that both teams prepared for the semi-final in the west. Rangers went down the Ayrshire coast to Tunbury, while Hearts prepared at Gurukh and Inverclyde. Cahoon. Good ball through and Woods did exceptionally well as Mackay stabbed it through. Great effort by the hot skipper. This uh, move came from the free kick. Mackay was very sharp as it was laid off to him. Getting it through and Woods doing well. Now back come Hearts. Foster stopped by the combined efforts of Gary Stevens and then Terry Butcher. Hearts uh, looking lively and their uh, supporters quite pleased with the start they've made. Ferguson knocking that one just away from Bannon. Ian Ferguson, those surging runs, a speciality of his. Whitaker wearing number four, steals it back to his keeper. Whitaker another 
old firm player in the Hearts lineup. And that uh, part of the field you can see just a clutter of maroon and blue jerseys. Berry with the right thigh strapped up does well. Walter Kidd. Goff wasn't quite sure. I think he was looking for a shout. Or it was in fact Butcher looking for a shout there and the post to concede a corner. The first corner of the semi-final going to Hearts. Eamon Bannon's experience here. Men trying to go for the markers. Woods in desperate trouble, but a bit of a push going on there. And the referee spotting it. And he in fact is calling over Mike Galloway, who was roaming around that penalty area. And here is the in-swing corner, Woods committing himself and making a bit of a hash of it, but the whistle had already gone. Galloway, the offender. <laughs> Bannon working hard. Black in support. Forward pass not good enough. Gary Stevens. First in line back, picking that one up quite easily. Trying to Whitaker. Again, the ball given away in midfield, picked up by Brown. Richard Goff. Cooper hotly pursued by Kidd. And Foster has to turn. Butcher to golf. Rangers building from the back. Stevens. Walter's got a bit of space, but it just cuddled away from him. Walter's made a good diagonal run there. Just about nine minutes played in the first half. If you've just joined us on BBC Scotland, no scoring here at Hamden in this live semi-final Skull Cup match. John Brown. Competing well for the ball in midfield, but Rangers keeping it tight. Another free kick. Ray Wilkins, of course, was the player of the month last month, and he really is the Rangers playmaker in midfield. Dave McPherson. Bannon, that was a good header. Cahoon and Foster combining. and bowling over Mark Walters there and he's going to be pulled over by referee Bob Valentine and I don't think the big centre half could complain about that Walters trotting back into the action and uh, from that shot you can also see that there's still a bit of rain falling here at Hamden no yellow card just uh, ticking off as the free kick comes to Nisbet Stevens. Stevens well checked by Bannon, but at the expense of corner. Stevens always willing to venture forward. So Rangers have the corner. The big men up on the edge of the box. Cooper to take it, looking for close support. Stevens, dummied. Henry Smith did exceptionally well, but Walters is there. Here's the corner that did all the damage. 
Stevens. Butcher went in the dummy, the Hearts defence at sixes and sevens, and Henry Smith was very brave, deserved a bit of luck there, didn't get it, and look at Walters drilling that one home. Rangers won the Hearts nil, 11 minutes on the clock, and that really is a body blow for Hearts. Long breaking pass and caught Durant offside. First goal in the semi-final, always important. Yes, a little bit of luck at the end for Matt Walters, but uh, the Hearts defence should have cleared it sometime before that. So Hearts being punished quite severely. Henry Smith certainly can feel a bit aggrieved. He deserved a little bit of better support there. He certainly committed himself. Hearts have another free kick. Somebody taking an knock on the back of the head. It may well be Mike Galloway. Yep, number five it is. shake of the heads, back into the fray, so Hearts need to get back into the game, a goal urgently needed for the Tynecastle men. Kai, another testing one, but the big Rangers attackers, the defenders getting the best of the Hearts attackers there. Butcher, with no problems with that one. And it was Foster who was Barging into him, conceding the free kick. This bit battling in midfield along with Whitaker. And Goff and Butcher, good understanding at the back. On that occasion, it was Richard Goff mopping that one up very easily. Play a bit uh, untidy, but uh, young Scott Nesbitt really revelling in the atmosphere. Under 21 squad international, and on Saturday, of course, scoring an important second goal for Rangers at Tyne Castle. John Brown just knocking that one wide as Rangers get back. As we approach the 15-minute mark, there's not been a lot of great football from the game. It's been competitive and hard as uh, both sides have battled. Even Bannon has shown some very nice touches. But Stevens keeping check. Bannon does it again. Berry tries again. Oh, what a great save! Brilliant work there by Neil Berry. That is true grit. And Woods replied with a fine save. Bannon caused the trouble. The Rangers' defence were uh, almost at sixes and sevens. And look at Berry's determination. Determined to go. And in come Hearts again. The referee waving away half-hearted appeals for a possible penalty. But that uh, Berry effort will really spur Hearts on now. The whistle had gone as McPherson drove that one into the side netting. But, uh, but for Chris Wood's athletic save, Hearts could well have been in level terms. Well, it started to do with a bad header from David Cooper back there, who headed out the way he shouldn't head it into the play, and instead of heading towards the wing, and uh, it was nearly a very dangerous time for Rangers. Cooper through to Walters. Walters, McPherson trying to park him man for man. Terrific skills. Black at full stretch. Bannon forced to get that one upfield to relieve the pressure. Golf does exactly the same, but even Bannon certainly made a telling contribution on Saturday when he came on as a substitute. And... Uh, so far, he's been the man most likely to succeed for Hearts. Which 
Fraser again in the air. Ferguson taking over. Durand was offside, just fractionally there. Another darting run from the number 10. Rangers have the free kick. Kid knocking it away. Mike Galloway. Not a good ball at all. Butcher attempted to lob that one over the heart spike four. Just a little bit uh, too firm. <laughs> There's Andy Gray, uh, the and Graham Souness in the dugout, the two Rangers substitutes. Hearts battling hard, Gary McCoy. Nisbet for Rangers, another offside decision as uh, Rangers speed match its try and carve their way through the middle. The stand side linesman is absolutely 100% correct so far. Yes, but it was a lovely ball by Scott Nisbet, and uh, it must have been very, very fractional, Melissa, that he was just offside at that point. And Hart's not able to put any sustained pressure on Chris Woods, and yet Neil Berry came closest to an equaliser, defied by the keeper. Stevens, Ferguson, now Walters. Give you an indication of how slippy the pitch might be with the constant rainfall. Another free kick awarded by Mr. Valentine and Brian Whitaker just being told to just cool it down a little. The free kick tally seven apiece, almost 20 minutes on the clock. Rangers have the all-important opening goal scored by Mark Walters. Powerful header, and Nisbet really was facing the wrong way, but again, the flag was up against Walters, I would think. So if he had put the ball into the net, it would have been disallowed. of the scoreline. Galloway trying to battle his way down that right flank, but he's up against a real fighter in John Brown. Two similar type players as Hearts now. Bannon. Berry. Couldn't get it over Brown's head. Gives Rangers the chance to hit on the break. Durant. Berry and Kitt. Combining to stop them. Berry again, driving Hearts forward. Galloway. Dangerous cross. Goss there. Person. Another shot deflected by Walter Kidd. Hearts get a corner. And you can hear the roar of anticipation from the Tynecastle fans. Kidd trying the shot, deflected away by the Resolute Rangers defence. Ah! 
comes the corner. Mackay popping up everywhere now. Wins the corner on the left of Ian Ferguson. But uh, Gary Mackay really is an inspiring captain for Hearts. Cahoon just taken away by Butcher with McPherson walking. Now Rangers again hitting on the break. Wilkins, Walters, Giraffe through the middle, so is Nisbet. And Walters looked to be obstructed there. Walter Kidd's the offender, and that halted the Rangers' quick counter attack in its tracks. So they've got the free kick and Cooper to take it. Nisbet's in there, so is Butcher and so is Goff. Menace in the air. Butcher. Bannon was a bit chancy with that one. Ray Wilkins. Always seems to find a blue jersey with the pass. Goff. Nisbet inside. Walters look going through and the Hearts defence. Under pressure, but holding. Kid did well. Slip it back. Lisbon in pursuit. Black Bannon taking up space on the left. Galloway. There's Bannon now, but Stevens is very, very quick indeed. Makes a mistake, chance for Bannon. Cahoon! Brilliantly blocked by Butcher when all seemed lost for Rangers. Now the counter attack. Durant. Walters in the middle. So is Nisbet. Ian Ferguson and a courageous challenge there by Neil Berry. So it's two of die stuff, one at the Rangers end, and then up to the Hearts end. Butcher and then Berry. Great defensive play and great sweeping attacks from both sides. This is the semi-final now really warming up. certainly in line with Gary Stevens, who is in the middle of the park and the linesman on the far side, Mr Wiley from Falkirk getting a chance to show that he's just as adept at spotting offside as the other linesman <laughs> Wilkins adjusts to put the foot up there and this is probably Hart's best spell in the game so far. Yes, Rangers were right on top after they scored the goal, but in the last five minutes or so, Hart's come back into it again. So, Hart's have the free kick, and they get a chance to push forward. Just come back a yard or so, says Mr Valentine. Cahoon having a good game. 
flight, getting the break. Foster, Bannon, danger threatens. Chance for Hearts. And it just won't go for them. But they're keeping coming forward. Bannon again. Person. And again, the high ball into the path of the big men. Not paying off for Hearts. Certainly, Rangers seem most tested with the cross ball. Well, you wouldn't have given toppers for Hearts chances after Rangers took an early lead, but they have buckled down to their task. They have strengthened up a little in the back, which was a bit weak in the first ten minutes or so, and they've come right back into this game. Dave McPherson doing a splendid job at the back for Hearts. seem to have got their act together and are playing a, with a lot more confidence compared to work and battle. Black with the throw-in. Foster settles for the throw-in of Gary Stevens. A bit of a foul throw, but uh, the referee says let it go. Hearts try again. Brown's header finding Cooper. Wilkins joining in with Walters. Well, that's a rare bad pass by Ray Wilkins. You don't see him uh, wasting the ball like that very often. Paul oh, McPherson giving it away to Durant. The pass through, this bit is offside. Again, very tight decision, but again, I think the linesman was right. A little bit of an experience by Scott Lisbeth there, and more experienced player would have made sure that he was on side to take that particular pass because there was nobody to beat but the keeper. 29 minutes played in the first half. Hearts battling to get back on terms. Rangers not afraid to knock the ball back to their keeper. Big Englishman can certainly get tremendous distance. Two bounces and straight through. Bannon doing well. Again, the cover and experience of Butcher, critical for Rangers. Bannon chipping away, working well down that left flank. Well, the Hearts supporters in full voice now. Side now begin to get into this match. Another offside flag halting the Hearts advance down the left. Hearts. 
Foster puts it back to Black, but again, he, under pressure, he's forced to knock the ball forward. Well, Gary Mackay and Eamon Bannon are certainly doing their best to get Hearts back into this game, no question about that. for another corner. Hart's corner tally rises to four. Wood surveying the scene as Bannon takes the corner. Ah, oh, but the keeper had that one under control. Almost as if he had super glue in his gloves there to take Bannon's cross. but battling in the air with Whitaker. Golf, another high ball. The Hawks defence certainly is a bit square. Wilkins taking over, Walters back to Wilkins. Nisbet shouting for it and getting it, but Black battling hard. So does Foster. And the decision goes Hart's way. Nisbet uh, seems to have got a bit of a knock, the young Ranger. Phil Bosma was waiting just off the pitch, waiting to give him treatment, but uh, it looks maybe perhaps just a little knock that he'll run off as he moves about the pitch. Hearts of the throw. Durant springing on the left, in behind Kidd, Cooper's behind him. Wilkins again offering himself, John Brown might try a shot, and that's a weak one. And Dave McPherson was cool there with Ian Ferguson bearing down on Henry Smith. Stevens with the overhead hook. Black and Whitaker getting in one another's way. Bit of shouting needed there. Well, that looked like an accidental collision there between Walters and Whitaker. But immediately, Graham Souness is out of the dugout and running up and down the track. So both players will need attention. We've got ten minutes remaining in the first half. Rangers leading by a Mark Walters goal, scored after 11 minutes. I think it's a rain. Neither defence looks particularly comfortable when the opposition is coming at them very quickly. And the referee, in fact, seems to have his book out, and it looks as if uh, Brian Whitaker is the man who's going to get a yellow card. Parts of four players booked uh, on Saturday. Brian Whitaker wasn't one of them, but uh, he's got the yellow card tonight. Wilkins will take the free kick. Walters. Durant. Good shot to knock it by. Nobody there but Kenny Black from Hearts. Durant. But a weak finish. A real cacophony of sound inside Hamden as Rangers spring forward again. Nisbet playing to Cooper. Hart certainly matching Rangers in stamina at this stage. Wilkins. Now Stevens. 
Rangers stringing the passes together, but Hart still shielding the route to goal. Nisbet. Hart's closing them down. And Nisbet's inexperience gave that one away all right. Foster did exceptionally well there. And that's a great ball. Walter Kidd and John Brown was very fast indeed. But again, Kidd pouring down that right flank. Excellent work by Wayne Foster to spot the chance for Hearts. Galloway with the cross, but Brown stands for him. Galloway certainly has been a great buy for Hearts, and Brown has just proved himself more than a utility left back. Hearts, corners, Bannon, beautiful skill turned in, and that just needed a touch. Hearts very unlucky there. No doubt about it that uh, Bannon has proved a real thorn in the flesh to that Rangers defence. Really the trouble stemming there from the corner, Bannon checked, and look at that. Hart just inches away from an equaliser. <laughs> Back header by Ferguson and a pace of Walters. Person certainly seemed to hold him off. But the referee waving away Rangers' claims. I think you can tell what the fans thought of that one. Gary Stevens quickly with the throw. Nisbet, that was some throw. Whitaker having to backpedal. Stevens, Nisbet turning and Smith. Oh, losing it there. Again, a misunderstanding, and that was reminiscent of the opening goal. Lack of understanding there between the keeper and his defence. When he came out, he really should have held that one. And a corner needlessly conceded there by the Hearts keeper. Cooper with the left foot. Bit of pushing by Butcher as Smith came. But uh, pat on the back from the Rangers skipper as he trots back up into his defensive role. And the ball will come back for free kick two hearts. Just about five minutes remaining in the first half. There is the score line. Rangers leading hearts by one goal to nil. Mark Walters the scorer after 11 minutes. makes it look easy. Walters that time, doing a little bit of fouling on uh, Dave McPherson. No complaints from the Rangers number 11. Hearts of the free kick as we move into the final phase of the first half. Hearts have certainly had two very good chances to try and draw level. No foul, says the referee, it was accidental. And Hearts try and break down the right. Great cut out by Butcher. John Cohen battles for everything, but Butcher just seems to stretch out his leg. And I think you can see there the way Butcher was gesturing, he couldn't hear Chris Wood shouting for the noise of the crowd. You can see from the backdrop that the enclosure on the far side, the north enclosure, is really packed. And crowd enjoying this battle royal between Rangers and Hearts. And 
unrelenting battle for supremacy. vision Rangers just wanting to take the steam out of hearts with just about two and a half minutes remaining in the first half hearts would like to keep the momentum going One last serves before half time. Again, the long ball just skidding on the wet surface. Rangers have the throw. <laughs> Brown hurling that one down the line into the final minutes of the first half. No chance for Hearts. Mackay, that just beats Bannon's outstretched leg. Wind just come out quickly. Berry goes forward. Cut out by Stevens. Durant jousting with Berry. Wins it for Bannon. Pass off. Gary Mackay. And a desperate challenge there by Gary Stevens. Hearts coming forward in the closing seconds. And that was a tackle from behind by Richard Goff. And John Cahoon has battled solid for the first 45 minutes. And Richard Goff becomes the second player to be booked in the match. The first Ranger, the challenge from behind, on Cahoon. And virtually on the stroke of half time, the yellow card for Richard Goff. So Hearts have the free kick, which will give them the chance to mount the final attack of the first half. Mackay, McPherson, they're trying to go forward, they're looking for the corner and they've got it. But there's no time to take it, the referee's whistle has gone and Mark Walters, the scorer of the only goal of the game so far, with a goal after 11 minutes. Half-time Rangers lead by one goal to nil, Jim Craig, your thoughts on the first half? It's been a fairly even contest, Alice, so there's no doubt that Rangers were picked up by that very early goal and they raised their game at that point and they were involved in some nice sweeping moves uh, towards the Hearts goal without getting another. When Hearts scored them their due, they tightened up a little bit at the back, which had been, I thought, at fault for the goal. Drove forward well, set again good news out of Eamon Bannon on the, uh, right, on the left flank here. And as his first half progressed and the rain continued, there's no doubt that both sets of defenders were finding it difficult to keep their feet against forwards coming at them. And I think the first half, the honours were even, although Rangers have got the only goal so far. So with a reminder of the half-time score, Rangers 1, Hearts 0, we return you to Dougie Donnelly in the studio.
Thank you, Alistair. Yes, the team separated by that Mark Walters goal with me, Ali McLeod and Willie Miller. What do we think, fellas? I think I would be inclined to say we've got touch, perhaps a wee bit unlucky to be a goal down. Would you agree, Ali? Yes, I think it's not a game for the faint-hearted. So two heavyweight boxers just slugging it out. Mm. And I think possibly over the first 45 minutes, Hearts deserved the equaliser. It's not what I call a skillful game. There's not many, there's no room to play skill. They're all closing each other down. Mm. They're holding a go. It's, a, it's just like a heavyweight boxing match. Mm. And at the moment, Rangers are winning them. Yeah. Well, it's a, a, what you would expect, I suppose, in a Rangers Hearts match. Uh, are you surprised to see it going the way it is? Yeah, I suppose so. I, I thought Rangers would have played a wee bit more football. I think they've been a wee bit disappointing. I think um, the honours go to Hearts in the first half, um, as far as I'm concerned. They've had uh, yeah. three, possibly four half chances in the box, mm. unfortunately not falling to, to, to their strikers. Um, and you wonder if Ferguson was on, maybe we'd have sniffed one and, and put one away. Yes, he didn't have a good game on Saturday, Fergie, yeah. but I think it is a surprise that, uh, that Alec and, and Sandy have dropped him from, from the side. Uh, the goal came after just 11 minutes, so let's have a look at uh, the only goal of the game so far. Mark Walters got it, of course, and uh, I'm afraid the Hearts defence, really, I've got to look at this and say, oh, we should have had this cleared up a lot earlier on. There's... Uh, Henry Smith, who had that nightmare in the Cup semi-final last year against Celtic. I don't know if you blame just Henry for that one. It was a, a bit of a joint effort, wasn't it, Alex? Well, there was at least six Hearts players. Mm. I think Barry was unlucky. He got mm. a back head to the ball and it fell at Walters. And he sneaked it by in between the posts and the man. It's just one of these, your luck's in or it's out. And mm. It's Walters' night at the moment. That's right. And Walters got two bites at the cherry as well, Willie, isn't it? Yeah, it was quite an interesting corner. I felt uh, they played it short. I think everybody was expecting the long ball into the box again for their two big lads coming up from the back. And they played it short. And um, I don't think it was a great cross in by Stevens, but when, it, when Hamden's like that, uh, greasy on the top, and the ball just comes off the surface very quick, Mm -hmm. and the Hearts were unfortunate with the bounce of the ball but um, an interesting corner and they got the break that um, in semi-finals you're always looking for Yeah, so we look perhaps for Rangers to, to capitalise on it and they, they didn't really because Hearts came back very well after that point and Chris Woods had to make a terrific save as, as we'll see here uh, this is shot in fact came from Neil Berry who very nearly made amends for his part in the, the goal at the other end cracking shot and Woods had to look very lively indeed Ali Oh he's a Marvellous goalkeeper, his position play. If he was anywhere else, it's a goal. No, but I, just, I feel that Hearts, if they play to Bannon the way he's on at the moment, the weakness in the Rangers team, if any, is between Stevens and Goff. And all the dangers come from there. Mm. And Stevens is finding it difficult to keep his feet, maybe wearing the wrong studs because it's come on heavy rain. And Bannon's put over some telling balls. But against Rangers, they've got to be on the ground. And they keep putting them over high, the corners. Mm. And a waste of time. It's not a game for midfielders, Willie, is it? The midfield seems to be getting cut out altogether. Aye, none of the teams are playing through the midfield. Um, I suppose if, if anybody's trying to, it's Hearts. Um, when, when they do get the ball down, they get it out to him and Bannon. He's, he's really causing them problems. Um, as Ali says, they can't just play their corners into the box. In fact, probably the best chance of the game came when they played the short corner. Yes. And Damon Bannon flashed it across the face of the goal. And In particular, that was when I was thinking that Ferguson was on, he would have probably gotten the end of that one uh, and it could have tied the game. But uh, Hearts have got to get it down, play it in the ground, no use pumping the ball uh, into the middle because Rangers will just eat that up. Yes, it's meat and drink to the big lads like Butcher yeah. and Nisbet. In fact, Terry Butcher played a, a major part in, in one chance which Hearts uh, very nearly turned into a goal. John Cahoon uh, had a, a real chance here, but Terry Butcher, tremendous speed into the tackle and then look at this counter-attack here which very nearly gave us a, a goal at the other end. That's... Uh, here you talk us through this one, Willie. Durant breaking on the right. Yeah, it's a good break. It's always a danger when you go one down and you're desperate to, to get the equaliser. You push everybody forward and you leave yourself a bit spare at the back, and that's what happened there, and Hearts were a bit unfortunate. I think uh, Big Nizzy tried to take it down with his right peg when it should have been down with the left peg. Um, so it was dangerous for Hearts, but they were fortunate they got off with that one. Mm. What about Rangers' choice of, uh, of strikers? Because uh, they're playing Nisbet up front, but uh, he's largely unsupported. He's inexperienced, I think. Mm. But it says a lot for the manager. You know he must have bags of confidence in him. Mm. But I think you'll see Andy on at one stage in the game. It's maybe kept him just depending on what way they're shooting, you know. And they're shooting against the wind, it looks like this half. I mean, Andy will put a lot in maybe in the last 20 minutes if he come on. 
And Rangers have the one or two skillful players, I think, on the night. They haven't really shown it yet, Walters and Cooper. I think the difference in the side is that Hearts are missing Robertson in the transfer. They don't really have a goal scorer of his calibre at the moment. If they'd had a goal scorer, they'd be in level terms. Yeah, and they're a bit unlucky as well, Willie, because the, the chances when they've fallen have fallen to people like Mike Galloway and uh, to Neil Berry and even to Walter Kidd, who are mm. not the fellas that you're expecting really to, to hit the net from 18 yards, are they? Yeah, they've been a bit unfortunate and their chances have fallen to players that are not renowned for their goal scorer. Sure. Um, but as Ali says, they don't really have players on the part that are renowned for goal scoring, which is a, a surprise that Ferguson's still on the bench. Probably bring him on in the second half, and if they can get him and Bannon going the way he's been going in the first half uh, and bring Ferguson on, they still could call it, cause Rangers problems. Yeah. So we think that there might well be a couple of substitutions with well, the well, it's possible that Hearts have looked at it in the first 45 minutes, it's going to be a right battle, mm. and maybe Ferguson's not the right guy for the battle. So they've left him out for this part of the game, and now that it's settling down, you might find mm. that the skill will become more skillful because it's been played at 100 miles an hour, no quarter ass, none given. No, it's an enthralling match without mm. being a great match. Well, there's one more chance that we can take a look at with Hearts uh, still pressing as the first half drew to a close. And uh, Eamon Bannon had this uh, little run in here and that was just begging for someone in the far post, wasn't it? But the story of the game for Hearts, really, there was no one there, was there? I didn't, I didn't shout all the time, you know, mm. just that wee inch. Someone stops, if he just kept running, he walks into the net. Mm. Mm. Well, Ali's been talking through the first half, he's been watching it, about the fact that it's awful tight and it's a battle and there's not a lot of skill, and uh, Ali, of course, will say that there's more room to play in the first division, which is probably true. I mean, you play in the Premier Division every week, I mean, that's the way it is, isn't it? Yeah, it's tight, um, it's always going to be tight. You know your opponent so well, um, you're playing against them quite a lot throughout the season, um, but it's a good competitive league. Um, I mean, I think the punters in Scotland tend to like it a bit meaty. Mm -hmm. um, and we're seeing that tonight, so maybe they're delighted with, with the first half. We, we, we think that there could be a wee bit more football, um, but maybe the punters are enjoying it, who's to say? <laughs> Ali, what about the first division? Everybody keeps saying what a great league it is. It was last season and it is this season with, what, eight, ten, a dozen sides all with a chance yeah, of taking the one promotion play. I think you do get more room than the Premier League, I accept that. Mm. But I don't accept the fact that the Premier League should play the way if that's an example of the Premier League, I think it's time they got themselves sorted out. I mean, I think that we should aim to play, as they say, we keep saying Dutch style and that. I mean, how do Liverpool do it in their division? I mean, it's, it's up to the players. I mean, Aberdeen, Celtic, Rangers, all get great players. I just feel that it's how quick they get a ball up the other end. I'd like to see them slow it down and not play 100 mile an hour. Mm. But we're broadening the argument now, obviously, but yeah. there has been the, 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 put, the case put many times over the last few years that the Scottish international side suffers because the Premier Division is played that way. And then when we go into the international arena, players can't change their game. I mean, is that fair, Willie? You're involved in both. No, I, I don't think it's a fair comment. I think um, there's always problems at international level in getting a, a, a team playing together constantly. Um, the fact that they've postponed the, the, the league fixtures before the, the important World Cup warm-ups is a tremendous uh, boost for the international team. Mm. Um, but, but it's always difficult at international level. Sure. Yeah, well, we proved in, in Oslo last Wednesday that uh, our players can make the transition. Let's go back then to Hamden, the whole of the second half coming up live now. Can Hearts come back on level terms? Uh, can Rangers stretch their lead? It really is very even indeed. 1-0 to Rangers, let's go back and join Alistair Alexander. With them is Jim Craig. Thank you very much indeed, Dougie. There's certainly plenty of talking points there at half-time. And uh, as you can see, we've got the Hearts side back out onto the pitch. And there's no substitutes. Rangers side just coming out to join them. And looking down from our position in the stand, we can see that Rangers have not made any substitutions either. And there is the goal scorer, the only goal of this semi-final so far, Mark Walters. And he really has made one or two telling contributions. Yes, and I think the, if Hearts slowed the game down and let Rangers midfield and forwards dictate the pace of this game, it would be more difficult for them. The Rangers' defence looked particularly uncomfortable when Hearts bypassed midfield and played the ball quickly up to the striker's feet. And I think in the second half they have to continue to try and do that and, uh, and uh, wait for the Rangers' defence to make a, a mistake, which is quite feasible on a slippy, greasy surface that uh, is out there tonight. So Rangers ready to get the second half underway, attacking the goal to our left, the traditional Rangers end at Hamden. And the crowd, an excellent one tonight at Hamden, really enjoying this battle. Skillful play, I think I'd agree with Ali McLeod, a little bit at a premium but uh, endeavour from both teams 
and Hearts really coming back after a rather shaky start when they conceded the early goal, but all credit to the Edinburgh side, they're still in there battling. As Rangers try and set the attack down the right, Ian Ferguson hurdling the challenge and Whitaker putting it back to Henry Smith. So let's see what distance Smith gets with a bit of wind behind him. Every ball fought for in that midfield area. Dave McPherson decided to leave it to Walter Kidd. Moving Hearts a lot of service. First are turning into Wilkins and Hearts nipping away like terriers, but Butcher steering the ball forward. Black. Brown's got time to see Woods. But gives it away. But Hearts can't make anything of it. First real touch from Walters. Sliding challenge from Cooper. Black. And again, playing the ball in the air to the small men really gives Rangers the advantage. And uh, Hearts really need to keep the ball on the ground. But Rangers have to try and bring Ray Wilkins back into this game. He's been very, very tightly marked by Gary Mackay the whole of the first half. And it's noticeable that since he has been marked, Rangers' play has suffered. Frustrating spell for Hearts. Our statistician keeping a note of the free kicks informs me that it's Rangers 12th, Hearts of a 13th. So it really is a pretty evenly balanced match in that sense. But in terms of corners, Hearts have had five, Rangers two. These are the statistics at this stage. spotted by the referee it's been a bit of a niggling game at times but uh, only two players booked but it has stopped uh, any flow of, of football and players have been knocking it about Kenny Black gets it back from Bannon and Hart's forced to backpedal They'll try again. <laughs> Nisbet got behind Whitaker. Withstood the challenge of Black, then slipped as he tried to turn. If he kicked us to Hearts. Spraying the ball about with a plum. Kids. Foster. Now McPherson. That's taking the time to build up. Bannon to Berry. Gary Mackay. Galloway. Woods watching that one going to the far post. Now Bannon. John Brown. And the Hearts fans behind the Rangers goal. Cheering their favourites on. Clashing with Durant. Ball will have to come back. The 
it will be a free kick to Rangers. I find that a bit difficult to understand, Alistair. That was a blatant body check by Dave McPherson, stopping an opponent getting past him. And I think a referee must take action against something like that. So still Sunis and Andy Gray on the Rangers bench. As Rangers now have the free kick. Gary Stevens. All a bit hurried. No offside flag. Ferguson timed his run. Walters. And Berry rescues Hearts in dire straits. Nisbet offside and pushing that time, I think. But really. There was no flag that the Hearts defence looked to the linesman on the far side, but I think uh, on the replay we'll see that uh, Ferguson, in fact, timed his run, and this is where the trouble stems for Hearts. Look at Benny. Just got it away in the nick of time. Well, Henry Smith, the much-relieved goalkeeper there. Pitcher's positive header forwards. has been in and out of the game. Goff. Stevens to Walters, first time to Wilkins. Trying to pick out Nisbet, but McPherson was there. Very quick possession. Oh, well, Walter Kidd seemed to have done everything right, then gave it away, but offside again. And really, Hearts making one or two errors here that they could have been heavily punished for. But they're still in there battling. Black. Often as they shall not pass mood. Mark Walters. Chance to run at Whitaker. The double shuffle. Oh, Smith! Disappointed. Rangers again. Smith having to try and smuggle that one again at the near post. As Rangers try and KO Hearts with another one. tells you what their reactions are to the Hearts keeper. Now Hearts need a goal to really revive their flagging spirits. Brown there, another corner. Rangers quite pre uh, prepared to concede corners, that's Hearts sixth. Here comes John Cahoon. Pushing forward, but person up there. And Cooper playing it into space. Kenny Black. Rangers defence have come out. Have to play the short one. And it's Gary Mackay who has caught possession. And that uh, tackle from his opposite number in midfield, Ray Wilkins. Now 
Eamon Bannon. Pulled down by Ray Wilkins, and that will be a free kick. Two hearts. Foster the target man, Bannon trying to help it through. Cahoon going down, looking for a free kick, but it's Rangers sprinting away. Another break on. And McPherson at full stretch had to cut that pass out there for Ferguson. Another inch and it was through to Durant. And it could have been 3-0. Well, in the Skill Cup, there's no point in sitting back. You've got to go forward. And that's what Hearts are doing. The longer this game has gone, the Rangers are now beginning to dominate as Hearts are being caught at the back as they push forward. Walters. Not a good cross, but enough to cause a few footers in the Hearts defence. Completely miscuing that one. Who <laughs> gets it to Galloway? Hart <laughs> settle for the throw. The butcher just to make the challenge of Cahoon. Cooper has lancing pass to Durant. Walters is on the right. Rangers at pace. Nisbet. Ferguson arriving in the middle. Nisbet there now. Stevens gives it back to Walters. Hart's defence on the right. The double shuffle again. Go kick, says the referee, as Walters. And Walters and Black having worse. The referee will have to step in there. Mark Walters being called over. Just on the far side of the penalty area. And it is a, a long lecture for Walters there. For words with Kenny Black in that joust. I think more frustration that the double shuffle didn't come off that time, but that move started with a wonderful run and diagonal pass by Ian Durant, who is coming back rapidly to the sort of form that we saw before the injury. And Brown just sealing everything up at the back for Rangers as uh, we see Andy Gray out on the touchline warming up. 13 and a half minutes played in the second half. Rangers a two-goal cushion and looking to add to it. Mark Walters through the middle. Oh, and Henry Smith foiled the Rangers winger. Smith's anticipation in coming out of his goal there really saved hearts. As the Gorgi Road men go forward once again. Another move foundering on the intense pressure and marking that Rangers are putting on them. Parks also have Ian Ferguson limbering up on the touchline, so possible double substitution coming up. There's Andy Gray. Looks as if he's about to make his Rangers debut. Gary Mackay. Still driving Hearts forward, Bannon, the right foot shot, and Woods took that one well, skidding on the wet surface, but uh, Chris Woods really, at times, looks almost unbeatable. I think the main difference, Alistair, is that the rear guard in front of him, back forward, has tightened up quite considerably, and Hearts just unable to get the final pass through them into the 18 yard box. Butcher issuing instructions quite clearly to Brown. Fair 
Robertson has had her out. Now Walters, the tormentor of hearts tonight, and a real heartbreaker too. Scored the first, laid on virtually the second for Scott Nisbet. Rangers 2, Hearts nil. 15 minutes, 16 minutes gone almost. Nisbet trying to turn on the style, but slipping. Rangers still tightening the screw around that Hearts penalty area. Kai driving it downfield. Galloway in pursuit, Woods has to hurry. He's out of his goal, he's slipped, and Cahoon can't get the shot in, it ricocheted off ground. Now Rangers coming back, but offside clearly against Walters and Nisbet. They sprung like greyhounds out of a trap there. As for one moment, uh, Hearts were always getting a chance to get a shot in and goal because Woods had slipped when he came out in the collision, and uh, certainly the Rangers goal was open, but now here is Cahoon the chance! needed a goal badly but it's just not going for them at all John Cahoon had the chance there, he took advantage of a rare error by Butcher and really had the chance to score, beat Woods but the posts as well that's what happens when you're 2 nothing down isn't it they just don't take the chances if it was 2 each that one might have gone in from John Cahoon but a rare error by Terry Butcher who has played quite well tonight but all credit to Hearts, they're giving everything they've got. And certainly, Cahoon tries again, but closed down by Wilkins, who covers a lot of territory for Rangers. Kids. The best Hearts can get out of that's a corner. take it quickly, Bannon, but that's straight on to Butcher's head. Kid leaves it, Black, Rangers defence out, Bannon can't quite keep it in, he was leaping in the air, and he certainly, his momentum carried him over the touchline. John Brown, for Rangers. Woods had come out of his goal, but elected to put it through to... Losing it to McPherson, Bannon, Black, Foster, Galloway to Gary Mackay, onto the left foot, a great effort off the bar! Gary Mackay, a captain's heroic role for Hearts. Tremendous effort by the number eight. And the Hearts supporters rising to the side. They're putting in a tremendous battle, and it was Galloway. But look at Mackay stepping inside and the left foot shot, beating Woods, but Woodwork coming to the rescue for Rangers. 19 minutes in the second half, and again, a chance for Hearts. At person trying the law, but Woods just backpedaled a yard or so and took it comfortably. But Hart's really doing well. Uh, magnificent work too by Gary Mackay there. Saw the space, put it onto the left foot, and tried a little lob come cuddling and deserved a better fate than hitting the crossbar. So Hart can point to that Mackay effort that came off the bar and the John Cahoon shot that just went wide of goal. But that is the way football is. And it looks as if Rangers are shortly to make this substitution that we've been anticipating. Andy Gray waiting, poised on the touchline. As Cooper flicks it through, Mark Walters in on Smith. Oh, he got it through the keeper's legs, and what a deflection, a lucky one there by Smith. But Walters really is an electrifying player. And the roar for the crowd tells you that Andy Gray is about to make his Rangers debut. A tremendous reception from the Rangers fans. 
and Scott Nisbet, the scorer of the second goal, getting a hero's farewell as he leaves the pitch. The youngster popped in that vital second goal. And look at Andy Gray, 32 years of age, made his uh, semi-final debut against Hearts in the Scottish Cup semi-final in 1974, and now a Rangers debut. As Ferguson drives it in. Golf shot and Smith in action again. Rangers just come through in these power bursts and uh, Hearts really put on the right when Rangers search forward. Now Ferguson, Rangers growing stronger as the game progresses. Walters is onside. No fouls as the referee as Whitaker came in on the flying Walters. Close decision. Now Galloway trying to power through. Oh, and he pulled Butcher back there. Galloway acknowledging the free kick. Soon as limbering up on the touchline. Committed Andy Gray to the fray. I can appreciate Andy Gray coming on. I'm a little more surprised that Hearts have been substituted because some of their players now are beginning to show the signs of a long game and uh, they've worked very hard indeed. Up front, Wayne Foster, John Cahoon having to do an awful lot of work, I think could do with the reinforcement of Ian Ferguson up there to help them. So Cahoon takes the throw, but Butcher mopping it up. No, here's Andy Gray. He doesn't look to have the pace, and I think he lost his footing there. I think that pitch is a little bit tricky there, because he just seemed to be running and not actually gaining any ground. So the roar of anticipation stifled in the throats of the Rangers supporters. Now Hearts, Bannon. Three, four men in the box. Behind everyone. Can he get another shot in? Out to Bannon. Glancing header, Galloway! And again, the man from the back coming up, being asked to finish in style, but not that time. Hearts have Ian Ferguson warming up on the touchline, so could well be that they've got to throw him into the fray by our watch. 23 and a half minutes gone in the second half, and there's Ian Ferguson going to take off his tracksuit top. Berry battling in midfield. Galloway. Cahoon. Golf there for Rangers. Now Andy Gray. Tries the flick. He's so keen to get involved in this one. Looking it through the middle, but golf is time to look over his shoulder there and see that there's no maroon jersey within 20 yards of him practically. We've well, got sixes and sevens just now, Hearts, uh, with uh, John Cahoon withdrawn now on the right wing and Mike Galloway having pushed forward. But uh, the problem is when Cahoon gets the ball and uh, is trying to spray it about, the man he should be aiming for up there is himself. And I think the sooner Ian Ferguson comes on, an actual front player for him to aim for, I think the better. Kenny Black holding it. Golf winning the duel with Wayne Foster and golf strides forward. Brown, Cooper on the left, finds Andy Gray. Now Cooper. Cooper really being on the fringe of this game, but that's a telling pass. Durant Walters behind Stevens. Durant again, and he didn't really look up and pick up uh, any light blue jersey, straight to Neil Berry, who's battled constantly throughout this match, for Hearts. 20 minutes left as Hearts come forward again. A 
and the substitution now about to be made by Hearts. Wayne Foster coming off and Ian Ferguson, of course, another ex-Ranger, going to come on and take his place. That's Wayne Foster. So Hearts, nothing to lose now. The rain still teeming down. Yes, midfield players having to push forward a little bit as well now, Alison, and uh, really they've got to get a goal within the next five minutes or so because morale is already beginning to be sapped a little by being 2 nothing down, uh, passes going astray, and I'm just thinking what a cruel game this is when you're a goalkeeper, one mistake by Henry Smith who has played well most of the season. Rangers throw off the head of Walter Kidd. The Hearts veteran. He seems as sprightly as ever. Cooper. His turn to turn on the style. Walter tries to do it as well, and as he's pinned swept from him by Gary Mackay, who is not pleased with Walter's. And it looks as if Walter Kidd's going to be booked for the challenge on Cooper. Well, two ball players in the wars there within a space of a few yards of one another. Walter Kidd, the third player to be booked in the match. Second Hearts, Brian Whittaker booked 35. Richard Goff just on half time, and now the yellow card for Walter Kidd. In fact, he's been called back, and he wants Cooper over too. Mr. Valentine obviously perhaps heard something that David Cooper said. So that's uh, two apiece booked in this match. And the outcome of all that untidiness, free kick two Rangers. Cooper slanting it across. Kai battling away, picked up by Wilkins. Wilkins now just knocking it about, almost casually. Walter's a lovely dummy, but McPherson read it. Cahoon. And then gives the ball away. pursued by Galloway and that really is a rather unsavoury sight now reacted quite sharply the referee is not taking any further action no yellow cards just a, an admonishing finger and says get on with the game it's a free kick to Rangers Saturday in the league match at Tynecastle, Hearts had four players booked and Rangers two. So it seems every time these sides meet, it's always a battle and it's always midfield duels, tight marking, little room for the skillful players. Walters just being a little too clever there, putting too much icing in the cake. Ian Ferguson trying to get into the fray. Number 12 jersey for Hearts. Neil Berry. Mackay 
as well. Mackay seemed to fall there over the outstretched legs of Goff. Now Cahoon, Butcher with him, and it's the long legs of the Rangers captain getting in the timely challenge. for Hearts tonight, and yet they still managed to bring Woods into action and strike the Rangers' crossbar into the bargain. Offside. Now it's a throw-in. The referee seems to be, and the linesman, seem to have some doubts in convincing the players it is, in fact, a throw-in. It was a foul throw, I see, by Mike Galloway, um, Alisson, and uh, quite disgusted he was with the whole thing. Ferguson, so the free kick to Rangers wanting to get the game going. Rangers seem to suck hearts forward and then try and surge through in the counter attack. There's no doubt about it that the, the players that have on this pitch tonight they all are really super fit. Yes, everybody's given their all, particularly for hearts. I think special mention must be made of Gary Mackay. Uh, another long ball through the middle, but again offside. Galloway now is pushing forward, almost a centre-forward position. Yes, but uh, Gary Mackay has really played a magnificent role for Hearts tonight, driven forward, but they are a little bit short up front, and um, just not managing at present moment to try and pierce this Rangers rear guard at all. If you are expecting the national news on uh, BBC Scotland tonight, I will remind you that it is uh, on BBC Two at ten past nine. Here on the main channel, it's live action from Hamden, the Skull Cup semi-final tie between Rangers and Hearts, with Rangers leading by two goals to nil. Goal scored by Mark Walters in the first half, and then Scott Nisbet and a tap-in in the 53rd minute. And Rangers now bring on Graham Souness. And David Cooper is going off. Cooper has been uh, on the fringe of the game at times. So Rangers really now wanting to tie it up in midfield. There's about uh, 12 minutes or so left for play. Wilkins. Reminder of the scoreline. As Rangers come forward again. Walters. Smith. Andy Gray had a great chance. Hart's trying to break, but really that was an astonishing save by Henry Smith. And Andy Gray couldn't take advantage, it just fell behind him. Look at this. Stevens and Walter's pace was away. It's a good job Henry Smith didn't cut his fingernails this morning. And Andy Gray just couldn't put it in. Rangers have the free kick. Terry Butcher can take this one. A bit of jostling and pushing there between Ferguson and Whitaker. Uh, six to one, half a dozen of the other. The referee deciding the defenders should have the advantage.
Richard putting that one out. Arms forward there. A bit of frustration there in Gary Mackay's play. tells me this is Rangers 18 free kick parts of a 21 so that gives you an idea of the pattern of the game now Gray leg it off for Gary Stevens Ferguson the decoy and Stevens tried the shot parts lived in good at it by the pullback still trying to go forward there seems to be a, a light blue wall erected in front of Chris Woods eight minutes left eight minutes away from the place of the 1988 Skull Cup final and a successive second successive final against Aberdeen in support Durant in the box but he gives it back out to Gray tries to play it through to Durant I think Gray finding the pace of this one a little bit too much for him yes and the pit seems to be fairly slippy as well Alison I wonder if he's got the wrong studs on so here's Gary Stevens he had trouble in the first half but uh, looks sure-footed in the second Sunas almost imperious Walters to Stevens. Rangers keeping possession. Park stand their ground. Bannon to Berry. Cahoon is fairly deep. Mackay, there's space on the left. It's a great pass over to Kenny Black. Ian Ferguson trying to go through, gets the return, the shot of Butcher, and there was an offside flag. Well, sheer frustration creeping into the Hearts players now as they see this one slipping away from them. Although I was equally surprised there, Alistair, that the Hearts player was offside, but uh, the linesman is in better position than I am, I suppose. Mostly under cover, undeterred by the rain. Another free kick. Goff. Dave McPherson has battled hard through the middle. Four hearts. Rangers come again. But Bannon done a lot of good work for hearts, but it's a pity for them that he's having to do it in the second half, deeper and deeper inside his own half. That's out for a throw in. And that's Ian Ferguson who's back deep. John Cahoon trying to get over John Brown, but the header's picked up by Goff. Soonest. Five minutes left for play. Goal kick, says the linesman. 
Walters looking for the corner. Ferguson knocking it forward, but picked up by Berry. Eamon Bannon can Hearts get a consolation here in the closing minutes of the game. But it's uh, like that one that's running away from them all the time now. And the throw in is two hearts. Golf. Gray trying to find it to Sunis. Walters colliding there with John Cahoon. Another offside flag against Wayne Foster. And Hearts finally bringing on their second substitute. But by our watch, there's only three minutes left. And Malcolm Murray really won't get a chance to make an impact on the game. And uh, it looks like Dave McPherson, in fact, going off. He may well have taken a knock. Disappointment written all over his face. John Cahoon getting a bit of treatment. And the uh, Rangers will get a chance to take the free kick. We can give you the official attendance tonight as Malcolm Murray comes on. The official attendance, 53,623. So, again, a remarkable crowd here at Hamden to see Rangers poised to move into the final of the Skull Cup and, of course, joined by millions on television, live television coverage of this semi-final. It's Hearts now. Try and push forward. Arthur Murray gets his first touch to Cahoon. sprinkled with them it's uh, a succession of free kicks almost uh, I think tally of about one every two minutes Walters now Rangers want to finish with a flourish if they can Perry breaking it up Mackay John Cahoon battling bravely Goff miscued that completely, but when Goff makes a mistake, Butcher's there. Wood's taking his time by a watch, just over a minute left for play. Gray gets a glancing header, Walters! so far nothing much you can do about that top class finishing by Mark Walters first of all he's still got the pace almost in the 90th minute of the game still got the pace to beat a man who's just come on as substitute for Hearts and then had the presence of mind to just slot it past the goalkeeper Henry Smith into the corner of the net you can't ask for more than that so Mark Walters the destroyer of Hearts dreams in this Skull Cup semi-final Again, a remarkable crowd here in Glasgow, 53,623. Just proves once again how popular this Skull Cup competition is. And over 18,000 at Dens Park last night for Aberdeen and Dundee United. And this competition just gets better and better 
as Bob Valentine's whistle signals full time a victory by three goals to nil for Rangers. Mark Walters sent them on the winning way after 11 minutes. Then in the second half, Scott Nisbet tapping in in the 53rd minute made it two. And in the final minute, the pace of Walters and the deadly finishing finished Hart's dreams. 3 0 for Rangers. Jim Craig, your thoughts? Well, the first half evenly shared, although Rangers got the only goal, Hats came back into it very well indeed. And then the second half started pretty fair again, both teams throwing themselves into the tackle, trying long balls and short passes. But I'm afraid when Henry Smith made that mistake, it was a death knell for Hearts. The team's heads went down for about 10 minutes. Rangers did the opposite, raised the game, and really took control from that point onwards. The longer the game went, the more in control Rangers were. The back four, particularly the centre defenders, uh, Richard Goff and Terry Butch are very strong indeed, and there's just no way that Hearts were going to come back into this game, despite of great work by some Hearts players. And there is Mark Walters with a beaming smile. He's the man that has made the headlines tonight at Hamden. And there he is, man of the match, deservedly so, by the sponsors. Quite clearly, Mark Walters scoring two, and then forcing the error from Henry Smith and the youngster Scott Nisbet tapping it home. A tremendous reception for Rangers. They go through to meet Aberdeen in a real tremendous final on October the 23rd here at Hamden. A reminder again of the scoreline tonight. Rangers 3, Hearts 0.